Hello and welcome to practices under ITIS for specialist uh, create deliver and support CDS. The exam syllabus does include relevant practices for CDS. There are 12 practices under CDS and practices are used uh, quite a lot in the value streams because the value streams are executed only when practices are triggered and practices related uh, tasks um, are executed. This is the preliminary view of um, practices at a very high level. In CDS, we have got all these 12 practices, service design, software development and management, deployment management, release management, service validation and testing, change enablement, service desk, incident management, problem management, knowledge management, service level management, and monitoring and event management. The numbers which are shown in the parenthesis, they are the section numbers in the practices. Every practice has maybe somewhere between 25 to 35 or 40 pages, depending on the practice itself. And every practice has several sections. You will see here mostly that the sections numbers are usually 2.1. You see 2 1 everywhere almost, and you see 2 4 almost everywhere. Similarly, you see 2 3 in some of them 2 3 2 3 2 3 here, and in some cases, you see table numbers as part of the syllabus. And in some cases, you see subsection number like 2 2 is not mentioned, but 2 2 1 is mentioned. So, if section 2.2 has 2 2 1, 2 2 2, 2 2 3, only 2 2 1 is relevant for the exam. Okay? So, whereas in this case, um, you've got only 2 2 2 here. In the deployment management practice. So that's why it's important that you understand only those sections relevant for the exam for every practice. If you go, for example, to some other certifications like HVIT or DPI or DSV, you may see there also change enablement, but the section numbers might be different for that exam. Therefore, over a period of time, I would highly recommend that you become familiar with the complete practice. So, for example, you may want to read the entire change enablement practice as a whole. However, we cover you very well in this course because we actually have covered everything about each of these sections for every practice in this training program. And let me caution you, there's a lot of information in these practices for you to know for the exam. So do be prepared with some of the fine print as well in this training program, which you may be requiring um, to remember in the exam. And uh, you might recollect that the service value chain activities like engage, plan, improve, obtain, build, deliver support, and uh, design transition, they use or they call these practices. That's why uh, we are trying to understand what these practices really uh, do. Another thing which I would like to show you is the structure of these practices because. Um, and why we are studying only these practices. So the first thing is why are we studying only these practices? And that's from the syllabus. If you look at the syllabus uh, for the section two of the syllabus for the CDS exam, know how relevant ITIL practices contribute to creation, delivery, and support across SVS and the value streams. So if you look at 2.1, it's know how to use a value stream to design, develop, and transition new services, which we covered already under the, the value stream for new service creation. Similarly, we covered 2.3, know how to use a value stream to provide user support. You know, the, the uh, incident uh, input which came from a user, we covered the value stream for that. So those of, they covered three marks each at application level, Bloom's Learning Level 3. Similarly, now we've got 2.2 and 2.4. 2.2 has coverage for six practices and 2.4 also has coverage for six practices. So one practice, I just scroll up a little bit and you'll see the six practice as well. And these practices are mainly the ones we are going to cover today. So know how the following ITIL practices contribute to a value stream for a new service. And for this, you also have to read the manual a little bit, the CDS manual, and we already covered this. And similarly for 2.4, know how the following ITIL practices contribute to a value stream for user support. 
So 422 is from the CDS manual, just like 421 from the CDS manual, whereas the remaining references A to F, similarly A to F, are from the practice documents. So in service desk, we need to look at 2.1, 2.2, .2, 2 .2, and 2.4, including the subsections of 2.4. So when it says 2.4, it might mean 2.4.1, 2.4.2, etc. I will show you one more thing before we go into every practice, and that's the structure of every practice document. Every practice guide has the following structure. This is not a specific practice guide like release management or a software development and management, but it's a general uh, publication from Axelos, which is known as the practice guide structure, as you see at the top here. It gives you the template or the structure of every practice guide. Every practice guide has a chapter number one. I'm showing you actually chapter number two here because chapter number one is about the document itself. So for example, chapter number one will be, if it's a release management, so chapter number one will specify this document is about release management. Or chapter number one could specify this document is about software development and management. So for us, more important is to understand from chapter number two. And that's how you will know what are the meanings of the numbers 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 2, 4, and so on. So the moment you see 2 as the initial label, it means it's general information about that process. So 2.1 means it's the description of the practice and the purpose of the practice. So if it's service desk 2.1, it means what is the purpose and description of the service desk practice. Okay, so that's the first thing. And 2.2 uh, .2 is the terms and concepts under the practice. So if it's service desk practice, then what are the terms and concepts under the service desk practice? 2.3, which you will see often, in this usually we will see often 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and 2.3 is scope of the practice. Where does the practice apply? And lastly, we've got 2.4. And 2.4 is uh, practice success factors, as you see here, success factors. Every practice has certain success factors. What is a success factor? A complex functional component of a practice that is required for the practice to fulfill its purpose. Certain things need to be done for the service desk practice or for a software development practice by which the practice will fulfill its purpose. For example, in service, the, in software development, we may have to create a development approach. How does software develop in waterfall? How does it develop in agile? Some approaches maybe have to be clarified. Yeah, so that could be one practice success factor. And for every practice success factor, there are some metrics to measure that practice success factor. However, the syllabus doesn't go into the metrics. So these are the only sections generally you have to know for the various practices in any of those MP certification exams managing professional certification exams. There are other sections in this, uh, in all the practice guides, there are in total 34 practices in ITIL 4, therefore 34 practice guides, including uh, portfolio management, project management, risk management practice, and so on. In the practice guide, you will also find key metrics section, 2.5 is key metrics. But usually for these exams, you don't have to really know this section because some of the metrics questions are picked up from the, the manuals themselves, like the CDS manual or the DPI manuals or whichever you're appearing under the MP exams. And there's also section number three, which is usually not covered in the exam, which is value streams and processes. Um, there's a focus on the value streams and processes uh, itself. And, uh, and this is where the actual process uh, pertaining to every practice. So if there are certain processes under incident management, they will be described in 3.2. Yeah, so usually they are not covered, uh, except in very rare cases uh, in the exam. And sometimes you will see some process diagrams like this in one or two uh, uh, today, when we cover one or two uh, practices, we will see that such diagrams will come up. These diagrams use their own notation. It's not necessary to understand these notations because they are not being explained in these practices, but they have referred us to uh, to uh, refer to uh, certain uh, business process um, management notification um, document on the websites, on other websites. So as long as we understand that 
investigation of problem happens followed by known error communication in as this situation we are well prepared for the exam without having to really understand these circles and uh, those uh, rectangles so some amount of common sense and some intuition will be useful to understand these process diagrams uh, easily and just moving on um, and these practice documents also have organizations and people aspects and similarly it has the information and technology aspects as well um, and uh, the partners and suppliers dimensions acts as yes yeah, so you've got the partners and suppliers aspects for every practice and lastly we will have um, i might have missed that before we also have the information and technology um, dimension for every practice therefore uh, if i come back to this uh, slide here you will see that most of these practices refer to only to section 2 which is the the main things under every practice the purpose the description the terms and concepts the uh, scope and the practice success factors not the four dimensions not the processes procedures etc service design those of you who are from experience with itil v3 uh, will find it beneficial in terms of what you have already done in v3 so it's not that there's a 